Hey, good morning. Let's go over today's trade plan. So yesterday, the market got exhausted and overextended into a larger time frame area of support. And since then, we've seen a nice bounce in the overnight session, which took ES back up towards the previous VPOC, where responsive sellers stepped in. Now, heading into the open, our intermediate term bias is going to continue to be bearish, but our short term bias is going to be neutral because the market has now tested and bounced off of larger time frame support. And the bigger question heading into the open is going to be whether, at least on the day time frame, the downside is now done and perhaps the market can now balance within a range or start to trade back into yesterday's range. Now, with our short term bias being neutral, the real time intraday market reads and the real time intraday bias are going to become more significant. Usually that means that you have to be more skilled in reading the market in real time and it also requires more flexibility since either side can step in and the market can balance in a wider range. Early in the session, how the market behaves at the pre-market and initial support as well as the pre-market and initial resistance will provide us with an early indication as to which side is being dominant. If the market is going to head higher, then ideally, buyers can hold ES above the 41.59 to 66 initial support. And in the event that the market is holding above the 41.77 to 85 pre-market support, that would be an indication of stability. Now, keep in mind that holding above initial or pre-market support does not mean that we are bullish on the day. It just means that the market is fairly stable. On the upside, we have pre-market resistance at 41.95 quarter to 42.01 quarter, followed by the initial resistance zone at 42.10 half to 20 half. And we would need to see a successful breakout above initial resistance in order for our intraday bias to start to become bullish. And in order for us to get a bullish confirmation, the market would have to take out the 42.29 to 33 area, as well as 42.39 to 44. So in the event that we get a successful breakout above initial resistance, and that breakout then results in a successful break and hold above 42.39 to 44, then we'll have the intraday bullish confirmation, and that can then open the door for a move higher into 42.53 to 59, as well as yesterday's RTH high at 42.64 to 74, where sellers are likely to be active on first test. Now, on the downside, a break and hold below initial support would be an intraday bearish indication, but in order for us to get a bearish confirmation, the market would need to take out the 41.2475 to 36.75 larger time frame support, and we would need to see broad market weakness and big and sustained downside momentum in order to get a breakdown below 41.2475 and a successful break and hold below that zone would serve as a bearish confirmation, which can then result in a move down into the next larger time frame area of support. So that is the market context and plan heading into the open. Again, our short term bias is neutral, mainly because the market got overextended into larger time frame support. And now there is potential for the market to consolidate and balance in a wider range. And if we're seeing a lack of downside momentum or a lack of continued weakness in the other markets, then there is potential for the market to attempt a breakout above initial resistance and then perhaps begin to balance yet again. So today we will need to be a bit more flexible. And even though we can still look for shorting opportunities, ideally we want to get shorts either at good trade location or in situations where we are seeing clear and obvious signs of intraday bearishness in real time.